Today we have Tara Teresa Hill, who is the author of The Spirit Hour, Volume 1. Since childhood, Tara has been fascinated by ghosts, hauntings, and the afterlife. Her stories are based on personal reflections of her beliefs, what the afterlife might be. Her writings are on what if you broke down the barriers between the living and the dead, and the spirits and the humans were able to communicate with each other. The Spirit Hour is Tara Teresa Hill's first collection of ghost stories. These spirits of the dead are fully developed characters with their own personalities. Tara also has a blog, hauntedwriter.com. For Tara's older blogs, you can go to ghostpost.com. Again, all these links will be at the bottom of this podcast, and I encourage you to go check out Tara's links. Tara's book will be available on Amazon, and it is really an excellent read. So right after this brief message, we'll be back with my conversation with Tara Teresa Hill. What is it about the unknown that fascinates us so much? Is it for the thrill of it all? Or do we seek proof of life after death? Whatever our reason may be, we find ourselves being drawn in by these places and the bone-chilling tales that they have to offer. Tortured souls cross boundaries to reach out with stories that they want to share with us. There are times we simply hear the echoes of a memory on loop. The question that remains is this, are you open-minded enough to handle it? Dive into the paranormal with DC O'Rourke, your personal guide, as we traverse the globe to dissect haunted places in each and every episode of Hauntingly Yours, a podcast for the paranormal where the spirits are always waiting. Today we have Tara Teresa Hill, author of The Spirit Hour, Volume 1. How are you doing today, Tara? I'm doing well, Al. How are you? I'm doing really good. I see, I mean, with your new book coming out, and we'll get to that, to that shortly, what led you to, I mean, the spirit out, I'm taking it, it's paranormal. Yeah, well, it's paranormal fantasy, really, um, but not um, not specifically like, but yeah, yeah, it's paranormal fantasy. I'm thinking it's not specifically like, like a lot of paranormal fantasy has to do with angels and demons and fighting to save the world kind of thing. My stories um, focus more on individual characters and their relationships. It's not, uh, it's not like an epic style fantasy. It's more like the individual characters and how they get along and uh, why one might see a ghost and why, you know, why one doesn't. Cause sometimes they are the ghosts. Sometimes my characters are the ghosts, the main character, and sometimes they're not. So it depends on which story you're reading in the book. And how many stories are in the book? There are five. It's just a short um, anthology of those stories. So there are five, but it's still, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's still uh, for the five stories. It's still pretty long. So it's a 104 pages, the paperback. And what, what led you into writing your book? Well, I wanted to give people a taste of my writing as I'm working on longer projects. Um, but I wanted to, you know, practice writing short stories too. And I really, I love short stories as a medium. I mean, they're a lot of fun to read. They're a lot of fun to write. Um, But one reason why I did a book version is because something that I've run into a problem, uh, well, not a problem, but a difficulty with is I kind of have a hard time narrowing down like a certain limit of words. And a lot of times when you look to submit stories to places, they want like a thousand to 3000 words. And some of my stories, like, you know, I'm comfortably sitting at 5000 words or more, you know? Yeah. Is this your, is this your first book? This is my first, um, yeah, this is my first ghost story uh, collection. Yeah, because I see you have another book out. Uh, what can you do with two mommies? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that was something I wrote in college, actually. Yeah, that, that that was a nice story to write, too. I Actually, that was a project from college. And then I said, ah, let me just turn it. Someone, my teacher said it really sounds like it would make a good children's book. So I put it together uh, as a children's book. And um but I don't really want to focus on being a children's author. So I was like, eh. But, you know, yeah, it's still out there technically. So, Yeah, so it's a big jump from uh, a children's book to uh, more of a paranormal book. But 
uh, have you had any paranormal uh, experiences in your in your background? Oh yeah, um, I mean I've had a I've had a bunch of them. I won't I won't say like I've had like hundreds because I haven't, but I've had a, a bunch of them that were really I felt really impactful, especially when I was living in my college because my college is uh, was built in the eighteen hundreds. And it, I mean, it's older than that. The campus is older than that, but the college itself was founded in the 1800s. And the, the oldest building was from like the late 1800s. And that place was definitely haunted. <laughs> yeah, I had a bunch of experiences at college where I saw like physical, you know, um, full apparitions. So that was that was pretty intense. You want me to tell you one of them? Sure, sure. Yeah, it'd be great. Okay, this one kind of took place over two days. I was... Um, I was going to be a junior. So it was going into my junior year and I was an orientation leader, which meant I was back at the college before most other people were. It's the college of Mount St. Vincent, by the way, in uh, Riverdale, New York. So that was the year that I was actually, I got a chance to live in the oldest building on campus, like the oldest dorm on campus. It's called Merillac Hall. And as I said, it was built like in the 1800s and a beautiful stone house had, you know, separate wings, it actually had wings to the house. I mean, it was gorgeous, but it was 100 percent haunted. And I remember <laughs> feeling apprehensive going there because I already heard all these like stories from other students. And I said to myself, you know, you're really going to go do this. You're going to live there all year. I said, well, I'm not going to. I said to myself, I'm not going to skip on the chance, though, you know. Right. You know, I'm not going to skip the chance to live in this building. So I did it and I, and I really do love it. But, uh, the very first day we move in, my, uh, boyfriend, my boyfriend at the time is now my husband, but, uh, at the time we were dating, helped me move in and get settled. And my mom came in and helped me as well. My, um, my boyfriend and I was standing in the kitchen. There, there was a kitchen in like, I think it was the second story of the house. And it was a weird shape because it kind of led on to the stairs. There were like these stairs that went through the wings and the kitchen was off of the stairs. So I suddenly hear a female voice calling my name saying, Tara, where are you? And I thought it was my mom. I had told her to stay upstairs in my room because I said, you're going to get lost trying to, you know, figure out this, uh, this building, this new building. And I answer her, but the voice just disappears. And I'm like, okay, you know, if it was my mom, she would have come downstairs into the kitchen or said, oh, okay, or something, nothing. So I go upstairs and I say to her, did you call me? And she says, no, I've been up here, you know, sweeping your sweeping the floor and everything. And I said, okay, because my, you know, my, I said, because George, that's my husband, I said, George and I both heard you. And she said, oh, well, wasn't me. And my mom is not one to play a joke like that. Like she would have told me it was her. So I said, all right, that was weird. And I kind of put it off and said, well, that's all right. Just maybe an odd circumstance, whatever. But we both heard my name. So I go to sleep. And I got to tell you, in the room that I was in, I was on the top floor of one of the wings, which was almost like an attic kind of thing. It was more separated from the rest of the building. So you actually had to go up another additional staircase. So I'm on the top floor by like the treetops. Mm -hmm. And because I'm the orientation leader and no one else has moved in yet, I'm on an empty floor. And all night I'm hearing like doors opening and closing. I'm like, that's the wind, you know, but I am hearing doors swinging back and forth. And the next morning I wake up and I gather my stuff. It's really early. And I say, I'm going to go shower, you know, get everything together. And I'm walking down the stairs and there's a person in front of me. There's another girl in front of me and she's going down the stairs really slow. And I'm saying to myself, okay, but could she go any faster? <laughs> I'm getting really like a little annoyed, but I'm also kind of still like, you know, I got my glasses on. I have glasses. So I had my glasses on. I could see fine. I had my caddy and I'm just walking. And as I'm looking at this person in front of me, and I'm particularly interested in her dress robe, because I said, well, that's an interesting old fashioned robe kind of look she has on. And then she turns and I see that she looks up at me and I'm like, wait a minute. That's interesting because I saw she had her hair pulled back high and like a bun. And she had this like this dress that the more I looked at it, the more I could see it was a dark brown. It had some designs on it. I could see everything. I just went, huh. And she looked right at me and continued going down the stairs. Down the stairs, 
made no sense because underneath us lived the nuns. We had like sisters of um, sisters of charity and they lived, some of them lived in the hall downstairs. So it made no sense to keep going down. There was nowhere else to go. So I thought that was funny. And I get into the bathroom and then I guess I kind of more woke up and I said, wait a minute, who was that? You're living, you were up there alone, remember? And so now I'm thinking I saw a ghost and not just a wisp, a full three dimensional figure walking down the stairs in front of me. Now, have you ever, have you ever mentioned like that to the nuns lived in the bottom? You ever mentioned that to them? I don't think I did, actually. I think I, I mentioned it to students. I mentioned it to the security guard. The sisters would have just said, oh, it's not a big deal. So it's this, they, they either, they either would have thought I imagined it, or if they did believe me, they would have said, oh, so what? Wait, hello. Probably a former student. Well, I've seen that on, on your uh, looking, you know, for your book. It, it says uh, you're fascinated with ghosts and hauntings and, and the afterlife in your book. And I want to give it away, but you kind of connect the afterlife with the living. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I because I really feel that they're all around us all the time, whether we can see them or not. And I believe they come in between the afterlife, like the spirit world, the spirit realm and our realm. And I believe that if they're not, attached like if they're not quote haunting someplace then they're able to go back and forth between the realms actually that's why i think it's a real difference between a spirit and a ghost i feel like even though i i mean obviously i sell it as ghost stories because as i said it's like you know i'm not going to say spirit stories because people don't they're going to say what you mean ghost stories i'm like yeah but to me the difference between a spirit and a ghost is a ghost is some, is, a, is a soul who's trapped for some reason whatever reason that may be they're trapped right. on the early plane. And I feel like a spirit is someone, you know, might be like, like, say, like an ancestor, or even even if you don't know them, but just someone who can go back and forth. So they can go up to the spirit, you know, when I say up, but they could go to the spirit world or they could come here and they go back and forth easily. To me, the ghost is a, more of a bodily figure that I've seen. I like I've seen the young girl in the house we lived in. Mm hmm. So to me, you know, uh, dealing with that years later and with this podcast and everybody I get to talk to like yourself and your stories, you know, and and your connection to them. It's not just in Ohio or New Jersey or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. I am fascinated with the afterlife and with the, some of the shows I've had on before. Do you believe in like uh, you're contacted with like a phantom phone call from the dead? And do I believe that can happen? Yeah. Um. I mean, I've personally never experienced that, but I have heard of people experience that. And I have, I have had one weird experience, but that wasn't a phone call from the dead. But I did have one time I had a phone call on my phone. This was back, uh, you're talking um, like early 2000s, though. So I was in college. I had a phone call, a missed call on my phone. It said, you have a voice message. And I thought that was so weird because I said, well, well, no, I didn't think that was weird at the time. I said, but it wasn't really registering who it was, you know? And so I played it. And when I played it, it was just a song. And then the song ended and then it was a radio. And I just thought that was so weird that my phone came through with, a, you know, that my message on my phone was just a song from the radio when I obviously hadn't called the radio. And I thought that was weird. And it's one of my favorite songs. Uh, Josh Groban's You Raise Me Up. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So I don't know how my phone did that. And again, I don't know. I don't think that was paranormal. I, I laid that more towards technology being weird, also maybe spiritual. But I thought it was just amazing that it did that, that that was the song. Well, I've seen that on your talking about the afterlife. Mm -hmm. um, they're not here to harm anybody. They're here to help people out, right? I kind of have this theory that it's half and half. Like I believe that most spirits mean no harm. I mean, and I even think there are a lot of spirits that help us, our ancestral spirits, spirit guides, you know, but just as like, there are good people. I think, yeah, sure. There could be bad spirits, but I don't think they have the kind of power that we tend to attribute to them. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, you know, you see all these, and I'm not saying that it's not interesting for literature, you know, because obviously like you need a bad guy, you make a demon character or something like that, or a bad ghost. But, what I'm saying is, I would think if it was real, we would have more of a problem. Uh, you, you, do you believe that you can move a spirit on? I believe you can encourage them to go, but I think we all still have free will, you know. Is it more of a dormitory we was in? or It was a dorm. In your dorm, did your boyfriend, did he witness this also? Um, he heard my name called, but no, he didn't see the spirit. It was just me in the morning when mm -hmm. I just woke up. And um, But he, he had his own odd experiences. He doesn't tend to... 
Actually, he blames me. Whenever he does see a spirit, it's with me. And he says, it's you. Yeah, that's what he says. That's what he's, uh, when, we, when we've when we had experiences together where we've seen something or heard something, he's like, it's you. I w- if you weren't here, I wouldn't experience this. So I was just curious, you know, because uh, sometimes you can be in the same room and you hear something or see something, yet your significant other doesn't. You know, so it's what I'm saying. Sometimes they pick who they want to be with. I think it's that. I think it's also, um, it depends on, the, you know, the person's abilities. I mean, I, I remember reading a book. I think it was with by Hans Holzer, and he was a famous uh, paranormal investigative reporter. And he talked about one, you'll have a spirit appear, like, you know, you'll have a spirit interaction. And he said, you'll have one person see it, one person hear it, one person uh, might uh, smell them or pick up on them in some other way. And, and, and then you'll have another person who will say, I don't know what you guys are talking about, you're all you know, you're imagining it. So he said it was very hard because it's rare for there to be a shared, like uh, a shared act, you know, paranormal uh, activity or a shared experience, a paranormal experience. I was really interested in, in, in the afterlife. So is that just, uh, is, is that, did that theory run through the, the other six stories, or five stories, or is it just in one story? Well, the stories are all, I mean, they're all a bit different, but I mean, what I what I tend to do is I pair up usually if I'm like the first one. The first one is from uh is from the first person. I, I tend to write in the first person perspective, but in some cases it's I don't want to give them away. But in some cases it's the spirit telling the story, and in other cases it's the human telling the story about what it's like to interact with the spirit. So then you'll get the first person, but it's from the spirit. You know, either it'll be from the spirit's point of view or it'll be the first person as, you know, the character is just suddenly interacting with a spirit or a ghost and wonders why, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, based on their relationship, it might be like I have a romance one, for example, called Haunted Hearts, which is about um, after a woman's best friend dies, a tragic death, uh, he basically starts appearing to her and she wonders, am I going crazy? And then she realizes that she's not. And he's really kind of quote haunting her, but it's not a bad haunting. It's a good haunting. You know, that's part of the problem of being a writer. You know, we think great on paper, but making us do like, you know, when I have to do an interview or talk, I'm like, that, that, that. The last author I just talked to, she says she, as she's writing the book, she, she's, the story's constantly changing. You know, mm-hmm. so her mind's constantly working, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult being a writer, I'll tell you that. My, I'm writing something like that right now where I change one thing and then it's like, oh, you got to change this. Remember to change this part in another story and, you know, I mean, in the other part of the story and everything. And I'm like, oh, my God, why did I touch it? Yeah, well, yeah you're talking about the uh, stories not being not alike. Yeah, well, um, well, in this book, The Spirit Hour that I wrote, um, there are two types of stories. It's either from the spirit's point of view. And I'm not going to tell you which one because I really don't want to just say, oh, this one's about the spirit talking. Or it will be about the spirit and the human, you know, the living character interacting. And usually it will be from the living character's point of view. So in one of the stories I wrote called Haunted Hearts, it's about this young woman whose best friend uh, dies tragically. And she finds, you know, she starts having these visions and these, um, she starts having dreams and visions and things about him and then she realizes that he's actually haunting her that it's not that she's imagining it that he's actually haunting her but it's a good haunting it's not a bad haunting it's it's more of a romance story actually mm-hmm. well that's 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 uh, interesting you know it's because the last my last author's hers was also romance slash paranormal so mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh so is this is this uh like I see volume one now is there gonna be more volumes? Yeah, there are gonna be more volumes. You know, I have a lot of story ideas. I mean I'm working on a novel too, but um a, a full length novel. Do you have other story ideas I wanna write? And I'm gonna probably put them into different volumes. I might do them this was just like a selection of different stories. I might actually try to do more of thematic stories next time. Like, you know, here's a bunch of romances. Here's a bunch of scary ones. This one kind of is like, oh, whatever I thought was interesting. <laughs> so they're they're a little bit different. You have a horror story in there. Like you have a sci-fi 
I wrote a sci-fi paranormal horror story, and that's The Reawakening. Awesome. I can't wait to get your book. It's on my order list. So do you go through a publisher or you do this yourself? Well, currently with this first book, it's self-published. I mean, I'm not opposed to the idea of um, finding a publisher, you know, but getting an agent is a long, arduous process. So Mm -hmm. it takes a while to find one. Yeah, I'm always curious, you know, on uh, my authors that's on the on the show, whether you self publish or you know, because it can go either way. I mean, there's pros and cons for both. Yeah, I'd love to do both personally because I think like some, you know, in some cases it might be better to self publish, and in some cases it might be better to do, you know, traditional publishing. I mean, certainly would love that to happen. Like here, you got a book deal, fantastic. So, what's your next book? You said you're writing a novel. What's that uh, based on? Uh, well, I don't really want to give too much of that one away. I mean, it's basically it. It's going to be a different kind of ghost story that I than from what I've seen out there. Really, it's going to be more of an epic kind of ghost story. That's really all I want to say about it. It's really in the in the you know in the fermenting process and everything and. It's always good to keep promoting and doing book signings and, and whatever you can yeah. uh, promote yourself, you know, and I'm going to try my best to get you listened to by a few people. I had plans to do conventions and things, and then, you know, the pandemic happened, so. Oh, yeah, this pandemic is, uh, <laughs> that's what my last author said, you know, it just puts a damper on things. You, it's hard to do a book signing when everybody's trying to talk to you and their mask on, you can't hear them, and social distance, so you're crowd's not like it would be and oh i haven't yeah i'm not even brave enough to try it honestly i'm like <laughs> nope we'll wait till it's over right right i really think it's a good idea to think deeply about the afterlife or at least to wonder about it i'm not saying because obviously i don't believe that any of us really have all the answers you know whether people have had paranormal experience or not i just feel that it's still it's a good idea to keep in mind because i like to feel that I mean, I personally believe in reincarnation and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I bring to my stories is I'm bringing my, obviously my point of view and my perspective on spirits and the afterlife and paranormal. So, you know, in my own personal beliefs. And one of the things I believe is that if we know more and we're more open to the spiritual world, that they can help us more. You know, if we become more accepting to whatever guidance or, you know, I'm talking about spirit guides and, and ancestral spirits who are helpful, like we can, you know, um, commune with them more and, and receive their help easier. And I think overall, it helps us develop for whatever's coming next for us, whether that's another life or, you know, there could be reincarnation on other planets for all we know. Right, right. I, I see you also have a blog the haunted writer yeah that's my website i'm working on the blog i also you know um it's in um well that one was an interesting idea i mean i might run with it some more it's an idea about a character i want to write this story and i know i will someday i don't know if it's going to be a blog i don't know if it's going to be a book but my idea is about a writer who has their spirit guide and they have like this friendship you know Mm-hmm. And and one is always inspiring the other kind of thing. And but but the spirit guide's like, oh my god, how do I work with this person when they're you know they have X, Y, and Z going on with them? Yeah, you know, like if someone has like you know take a cocky spirit guide who has a writer who doesn't believe in themselves or something like that, you know. And you have the older blogs too that uh, on ghostpost dot com, right? Yeah, that was dedicated to talking about the paranormal and for like real life experiences. I I would interview people. And you also have a paranormal hotspot. <laughs> I mean, you're you're quite active. You know, I, I see on Facebook the face a Facebook group, the paranormal hotspot. Yeah, that was yeah, that's basically a place where people can go to advertise their um, like, you know, like people like you or like other people in the paranormal can just share their their groups or share their podcasts and whatnot you know or their books people and i i really make it broad paranormal i'm like you want to do bigfoot go ahead you want to do you know more towards border towards fairies that's fine anything with the fantasy is fine um zombies is fine you know people can share because and the reason why i did that is because facebook makes it so hard to share things you know, in other groups, if, if you're someone who's trying to sell right. or promote, you know, like if, if you want to sell a book and you're not allowed to post the book unless it's free. And I'm saying, what's the point of that? I mean, not everybody wants to give away their book for free, you know? 
Right, you know, then you get into a problem with spamming when it's not, you're not really trying to spam anybody. No, you're just trying to get the word out there. And it's, you know, on the one hand, social media helps. And on the other hand, it makes it very difficult. I see also on Facebook, you have the Tara Teresa Hill ghost story writer and author. Yep, that's my author page. And um, I mean, I put all the links on my, on the website, the um, uh, the Haunted Writer a website. I put that up, thehauntedwriter.com. And I will put all these links on the bottom of the episode so people can go find you and check out your book and all the things you have to offer. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. It is definitely, it's a challenge getting the word out there and, you know, letting people know what you're about. And um, I know I could probably be so much better at like going online. It's just, I don't, sometimes I don't know what to talk about. I'm like, here, here's a, you know, like it's, it's just the weirdest thing. I'm an introvert by nature. So the idea of like, you know, putting up something all the time and saying, here, look at this. Right, right. When I saw this uh, podcast, I'm thinking everybody thinks like I do and they don't, you know. So, you know, uh, because, you know, the paranormal, like you were saying, it's a wide open field for Bigfoot, UFOs, spirits. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's like I said, yeah, it's a very it's a very big, you know, big, diverse field. And also. You know, there are things that I run into, yeah, that I don't believe in either. Like a lot of people really, and I'm not saying I don't believe in them at all, but I like, I don't necessarily believe they're everywhere. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people and they tell me about seeing something with red eyes Mm -hmm. or demons or something like every single spirit, there's every negative energy they meet, they're convinced is a demon. I'm like, I don't think it's a demon for me unhappy person but i don't i'm not going with demon here you know or right something you're like. you're 100 right you know because i, I would say probably 80 percent of the calls i went on were false it, there's a lot of things that were explainable that proved it wasn't a demon or a spirit yeah and that's something to keep in mind too and i've only come across once where i actually had a, dealt with a demon and i didn't do that because that's not my field it's not my job to do an exorcism or take the chance on that that's another thing to keep in mind too that it's not always sometimes there's a logical explanation and it's not paranormal at all it's not spiritual at all and i think people don't really you know we always want to think that it is i think because we get excited by the idea that it's something else something outside of our understanding of the world and everything. But then you just have a moment where it's like, nope, it's not, it's not actually a haunting. It's not. Right. I appreciate you coming on the show today. And uh, where can people find you and get a hold of you at? I'm on Facebook as Tara Teresa Hill, ghost story writer and author. I'm on uh, the haunted writer.com, uh, the haunted writer or one word.com. I'm on Instagram as Tara Teresa Hill author. I'm on Twitter. I'm pretty much. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. You know, I just, uh, I do answer to email, I answer to messages. People have questions about the afterlife. You know, I do try to like, you know, more for theory or fun. Like if you want to talk to me about the afterlife or something like that, that's fun. But sometimes people come to me for asking for deep spiritual, like, or they'll say, can you, you know, cleanse my house? I'm like, no, I can't do that. I don't work with that. I I do know people who I could try to refer you out to, but I don't really like, I don't do that. I will not come bless someone's house or cleanse someone's house. That's not something I do either. This is all creative writing for me and fun and inspiration. It's not like I'm I'm not a spiritual worker. I came across you on the internet and I thought, wow, you sounded interesting and uh, more dug into you. It's like, wow, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting, especially the afterlife and how you, your stories connect with that, with the, with the living world. And it's been a pleasure having you on, on the show. And uh, I look forward to uh, more of your reads in the future. All right. Thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure being here. I want to thank Tara for being on the show today and sharing her insights of her writing and a look inside of her book, The Spirit Hour. And I encourage you to pick up the book and support Tara. Support all the independent and other authors I have had on this show and their books as well. I'm your host, Al Cooley, on Ghosts in the Valley. (laughs) 